This is how you handle a doctor that won't cooperate with you. Hey, what's shaking bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So I had a video that came out just a few weeks ago and it talked about an episode I had with this one cardiologist who refused to give me any tests, who refused to give me any medications, even though I had just been dealing with a pretty severe breathing issue just four to five months after my open heart surgery. He wasn't listening. He was being quite proudful. And I want you to understand a lot of people in the comment section commented on how they wish they could handle their doctor that way, or they wish they could say the things I said to my doctor. It's really a little disturbing because I look at it and I think, why can't you? And I understand it's not everybody's personality, but you have to remember this. Your doctor is a specialist in medicine. Okay. They're a specialist in medicine. They spent years learning about the human body. They spent years learning about the anatomy, where everything is. They spent years learning about the physiology, how it works. And then they spent years learning about the pathology, what happens when the physiology isn't working right. First, they learn what everything is. Then they learn how it works. And then they learn what commonly goes wrong and then how to recognize that. So here's the problem. You are a specialist in you. You know nothing about medicine. You know nothing about uh, what they have been trained in or very little, but you do know what you're going through. And when you have a doctor who's not willing to listen, that's a different problem. Okay, that's, that's one problem. You might have another doctor who's willing to listen, but you feel is going in the wrong direction. Okay, that's another problem. And then you might have a doctor who does all the tests, does even your tests that you ask for, and they can't figure out what's wrong and they just leave it there or they misdiagnose you just for the sake of a diagnosis, maybe because they don't wanna demonstrate that they don't have the answer, and maybe it's because they just wanna give you an answer because maybe you'll just go away. But the reality is it didn't work and you're still left with your problem and what do you do with that? And that's why carnivores helped so many people out there because carnivore is a way of eating that tends to help people's health problems and it tends to manage those problems. And when they're not getting answers from their doctor, they haven't been doing what they needed to in their diet to change their lifestyle properly, or maybe they were doing everything and it just for some reason wasn't working. It turned out there were some other problems and when they turned to the carnivore diet, everything started to correct then they didn't need their doctor for all those problems. Now, lots of people go to their doctor. Some doctors don't like it when you ask tough questions. Some doctors don't like it when you ask questions they don't know the answers to. You have to keep in mind, no one likes a backseat driver, right? When you spend years and years and years learning about medicine and you're talking to somebody who's having these problems and then they start thinking about how they have these issues and Dr. Google says it was possibly this, this or that, um, not only can it distract them from going down the road that their gut is telling them they need to go down or their education is telling them to go down, because let's face it, when you have someone who's been in practice for 10, 20, 30 years, their gut goes a long way. They can hear something and maybe they've seen that a dozen times before or a hundred times before, or they've read about it in some medical journal and they're like, interesting, you might be going down this direction. So sometimes they maybe haven't even seen that condition before, but they've heard about it and they've always wanted to come across it. I know as a massage therapist, there's been times where I always wanted to come across the chest muscle, the pectoralis minor that mimics heart attack symptoms. And I remember in college learning about that because it causes a tightness in the chest and people think they're having a heart attack. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if someone thought they were having a heart attack and you know, you did all your due diligence to make sure everything was okay. And you said, you know what though, let me see if this stretch works. And I would show them a pec minor stretch. And then all of a sudden they were relieved that their chest tightness and pain went away. Now I have seen this maybe 15, 20 times in a 23 year long career. And some people had just come back from the hospital and they booked in for a massage. They're like, I don't know what it is. The doctor said it's muscular, but that's usually as much knowledge or advice as you'll get from a doctor because they don't really know too much beyond the muscular system. They know where everything is. They know how the muscles contract and work, but they're not specialists in the muscle. So they know there's a muscular problem, but they can't pinpoint it. And a good doctor will send you to a specialist. So depending on what your problem is, you have to accept the fact that they don't know everything. And maybe sometimes they're a little bit too proud to say they don't know what's wrong with you. And a good doctor, if they don't know what the problem is and they've done their first battery of tests and they're thinking, okay, it's nothing in that little window of tests between say blood work, maybe an X-ray or ultrasound or something simple, then you're still dealing with this problem. 
and you've done everything right. You're doing everything on your end. You've changed your lifestyle. You've changed your diet. You're doing what you think you need to do. After all that, if you're doing everything on your end and you can't figure out what the problem is still, um, keep in mind, they're not specialists when it comes to diet and they're not specialists when it comes to exercise. You might get the odd doctor who knows a lot about that personally or has branched out into those areas, but the average medical doctor doesn't know much about that stuff. Uh, not in a lot of detail anyway. So you want to get a doctor who's going to try and go a little further out and then a little further out until they can figure out what's wrong. And if they can't figure anything out, or maybe they think this is kind of hopeless, I don't think we're really getting anywhere, they should send you to a specialist. Maybe that's going to be a medical specialist. Maybe it's going to be a physiotherapist if it's a musculoskeletal issue, or maybe it's going to be a neurologist. Who knows where they're gonna send you, but you're gonna rely on them to either give you a medication to manage the pain, which isn't a solution, but it's something to help manage the pain, and then they're gonna hopefully give you a referral. If they can't figure it out themselves, you ask for a referral. Keep in mind, it's their home. You're going into their home. You have to respect the fact that it's their house. You're the guest in their house. Now, you might be paying that mortgage for them, but you're the guest. You don't wanna turn around and be a backseat driver and start ordering them on what to do and what not to do. And it's okay that you question them. If a doctor doesn't like the fact that you're asking questions, maybe it's time to look for a different doctor. If you got a doctor who likes to respond with a bunch of medical jargon, just to kind of shut you up and to sort of stymie you to keep you from just asking too many other questions because BS baffles brains and you're gonna sit there and go, oh, well, they're clearly they're over my head so I really shouldn't really say anything else. Well, that's not a good doctor either. A good doctor will explain it to you. And if you don't understand it, ask them to explain a little further. If they still can't explain it or they don't have time, say, can you send me someplace where I can learn more about this. So that way you're following their guidance. You have to remember in life, all walks of life, people wanna be dignified. And of course, in a position like this, you want to always try to dignify your doctor. Now, doctors make mistakes, just like anybody else. Sometimes you're the exception to the rule and you have to respect the fact they didn't see that coming a mile away, even with all their medical training. And it's not because they weren't good at their job, it's just you were the exception to the rule. So keep that in mind sometimes but you still have to hold true because they might be a specialist in the human body, but you're a specialist in you. You're a specialist in what you're going through. And if what they're saying might be the issue and you're like, I don't think that's it and here's why, well, give their diagnosis a shot or give their assessment a shot. If they wanna put you on medication, I always recommend, in my opinion, make sure that that medication is backed up by a test. Don't just get put on some random medication for something. Make sure they can back up why you need to be on that medication. It's not asking too much. And that's where you might start getting some friction with some doctors. That's where I had some friction with one of my cardiologists after my surgery. I'm not against being on medication. I want a diagnosis so you can give me the proper type and dosage of medication. Don't just tell me you want me on this medication for no reason or because you have a hunch, especially if that hunch is based off of faulty logic. And I have enough medical training to know sometimes what a faulty logic is. And in that particular situation I went through, I said, no, that doesn't really apply. He wanted to give me medication because my heart wasn't pumping out enough blood. And I said, well, that doesn't really apply because when that test was done, it was after I was in the hospital a few days after my open heart surgery. And I passed out a dozen times and they didn't know why I was passing out. So they checked my blood output, my volume, and they do that with a high contrast ultrasound. So of course my blood volume was low because my blood pressure is 77 over 57. So that number that this cardiologist was going on didn't really count. So when I was speaking up to my doctor, and by the way, you always want to speak in a firm but polite manner. You don't want to be a pushover and you don't want to be a bully. No one wants to be in a conversation with someone like that, but you do have to stand your ground. And if something's not making sense, just politely ask why they have come to the conclusion they've come to if you're thinking it doesn't fit. You know it's neat when you find a doctor and, and they say, I think you have this problem, and they explain why, and you stop and you go, that makes sense. That explains this, 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 and this. Wow, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how this goes. And a good doctor will want you to follow up with them two weeks later or six weeks later to see how it went. And if it didn't work, okay, well, there's another example of how you found out what isn't the issue. Now your doctor might look in a completely different direction or they might think that you need to go a little further with this or that. So keep in mind when you're dealing with a disagreeable doctor who's not really giving you the time and day, you can turn around and ask for a referral. You can ask for medication to manage the problem 
but that's not a long-term solution, but it's something you can manage because sometimes you just need to get on with your day-to-day -day life and you might need anti-inflammatories or you might need muscle relaxants so that you can get back to your life. And then from there, you can continue to try and figure out what the problem is. So there's times where medication might be a temporary solution to help you further down the road always ask for more tests. And if something's not right, say, I don't think we're going down the right road because I'm not seeing any improvement. A good doctor will work with you. A good doctor will want to figure out what the problem is. They're not just going to want to guess it and brush you off. And if they can't figure it out and they're not willing to do more and more tests and they're acting like they're at their wits end and maybe they're even trying to convince you there is no problem, but you're the problem. Keep in mind, Maybe it's too much exercise. Maybe your diet is off. Maybe your diet isn't as strict as you think it is on a carnivore diet. Maybe you've been doing a loose version of the carnivore diet. At that point, if nothing else is working, you're doing everything on your end because you can't sit there and eat Cheetos all day and expect your doctor to have a magic pill to make you feel better. You have to trust your doctors doing their job and they have to trust you're holding up your end. So at that point, if they can't figure anything else out, ask for a referral. Maybe it's going to be to a different doctor. Maybe it's going to be to a naturopathic doctor. Maybe seeing a medical doctor isn't the way to go. Maybe sometimes when it comes to a chronic problem, seeing a naturopath might be the way to go. They look at the body from a different angle. They have the medical training and they use, instead of pharmaceuticals, they use natural supplements to help. They usually have an education in massage, chiropractic, acupuncture. So they know how to treat different conditions from a more holistic point of view. Now, this isn't a commercial for a naturopath. The point is sometimes you can go to find someone just who's approaching it from a different direction and it's gonna be nothing but beneficial for you. So it's good to not always put all your eggs in one basket. There's lots of great naturopathic doctors out there, but once again, it comes down to the person, just like medical doctors. And you always wanna make sure you're treating them with dignity. Be firm when you need to be firm, but don't be rude. Don't ever be rude. No one likes to get attitude. And if nothing's working and you feel like you've exhausted everything with your doctor, ask for a referral, move forward. If th there must be a referral, whether it's in the medical field or somewhere else that they can help you. And if not, maybe look into getting a different doctor. Simple as that. Where I am in Ontario, it's really difficult to find a doctor, period. So either way, I want you to remember, stand up for yourself, speak up for yourself. No one's gonna speak up for you, but you. This is your body. You're going to them for advice on how to get from point A, illness, to point B, health. And if they're not helping you the way you want, you have options. And the first option is speak up.